We're speaking with Taki Olden, director of documentary film Billionaire's Tea Party, also AstroTurf Wars, how corporate America is faking a grassroots revolution. I met Taki very briefly at the Free Press Conference in Boston a couple of weeks ago. Um, I'm fascinated to hear more about this, Taki. Tell me about, first of all, the Tea Party is not really the grassroots movement they would want us to believe, is it? Well, it's not as simple as saying it's it's one thing or another. I mean, it has a large grassroots element. No one can deny that. And the, you can't tell a Tea Party person, or you're being you're being paid for uh, or sponsored by billionaires. But what it what it is is a, a large amount of propaganda that has gone into a number of what they call front groups or astroturf groups or basically corporate funded fake grassroots groups that then have infused their brand of propaganda and sort of populism into the tea parties from day one so that many people have jumped on the bandwagon but the people who are writing the messages are basically corporate sponsored or they're ide ideologically sponsored by people like brothers David and Charles Koch who basically are on a mission to get rid of government. So correct me if I'm wrong, but to me, a lot of the front groups involved in the Tea Party strike me as similar to the front groups Wendell Potter talks about in his book Deadly Spin when it comes to preventing single-payer health care from taking grasp, or the groups that were out there, you know, groups with the, the term clean air that actually wanted to protect the, quote, rights of smokers. It rings very similar to me in terms of the way that the money is funneled around and appeared to come from the people. Absolutely. I mean, the roots of this term AstroTurf are very much around these groups that aren't, don't even have members at all most of the time. I mean, we're talking about groups, as you said, the whole point of them is to sound like they're, they're, they're genuine people behind them. Uh, but in fact, they're, they're corporate sponsored. They're basically made by public relations companies on behalf of a tobacco company or a health insurer who basically wants it to look like their point of view has been spoken by the man in the streets as opposed to a large corporation who has a specific financial interest in this. Now, the difference with the groups that have, that have gotten into the Tea Parties from day one, I'm, I need to make it very clear, because people say, oh, they joined in later on, but it was from day one. They're groups with names like Americans for Prosperity and Freedom Groups. And the difference between these groups and those that you mentioned are that the other groups have no members at all. They, they really are, just like an advertising campaign. Whereas these types, the difference is, is that they use propaganda with words like big government and individual rights, and, and they paint this idea that the government is out to get the man in the street, the individual, um, with the, this kind of evil agenda, when in fact what's happening, and, and it gets a lot of popular support, yeah. and, and groups like this have got hundreds of thousands of members. What, uh, how did you infiltrate the Tea Party movement, especially given that I would assume they would be suspicious of anybody with an Australian accent showing up? Quite the opposite. I think that if I was wandering around with an American accent, they would have been suspicious of what I was doing. <laughs> I was too much of, I mean, I was too much of an anomaly for an Australian to be wandering around this thing in the first place, that people would come up to you and say, what are you doing here? Because there was suspicion, I think. Even from early times, I think various conservative uh, talk show hosts and such and, and, the, and the operatives who are running the groups behind us, the ones I mentioned before, are sort of telling people to be wary of, of you know, the liberals with their cameras. But as soon as they hear an Australian accent, the, the kind of the defence mechanism is melted away. Uh, so that actually helped me a lot. Basically, I infiltrated by just wandering around with a camera and kind of saying that I was interested in what was going on and, and I, um, to, to, the, to the people I interviewed around the place, I'd just say, look, I'm making a film, um, you know, and I, I'd say, I think what you're doing is pretty incredible and this is kind of an opposite version of what Obama did when, when he got in with this kind of grassroots uprising in the media. And I didn't necessarily say what my opinion on the book was either way, I just kind of say I thought it was amazing. Real quick, in the last few seconds we have, could a Tea Party, sim a sim something similar to the Tea Party, develop in Australia, given how different the political system is? I mean, is this the type of thing that really is ripe here in America, but it just could not or would not happen in Australia, for example? It couldn't. Um, it's a very long answer, but the quick version is, is because basically the, the Americans... Um, the idea of patriotism and the flag and the founding fathers and, and these things that are able to be manipulated by propagandists to wrap these ideas in, in the flag 
in Australians or English, we're just kind of like, yeah, whatever, you know, we don't have that incredible sense of patriotism that is great, but it also can be manipulated. All right, Taki Oldham, director of the documentary film Billionaire's Tea Party. I highly recommend it. Uh, thanks for, for joining us from, Tom, where exactly are you? I'm in a small town called Mocha, Mocha, which is in the Dominican Republic. I'm sort of taking a bit of a breather at the moment. So if you've heard dogs barking or motorcycles going by, uh, that's just life here, I'm afraid. All right, well, it looks like it's very hot there, so I'll let you get back to it. And thanks again for joining us. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, bye.